Welcome to the topic where we highlight Houston Community College, our students, our programs, and our reach into the community. I'm Todd Duplantis. Healthcare has always been a vital contributor to Houston's economy and our standard of living, but during this COVID-19 crisis, it's taken a whole new level of importance here. We're joined today by two experts in this field, uh, Dr. Carla Tyson Howard, Health and Information Technology Program at Coleman College. Dr. Howard, thank you for being here. Thank you. And we're going to start with Dr. Philip Nicotera, the president of HCC Coleman College, going to talk to us about some of the things going on out at Coleman. Dr. Nicotera, I know you've been very busy, but thanks for joining us here on the show. My pleasure, Todd. Thanks for having me. First, I want to ask you, as we, uh, we've discussed this before, but we're getting a lot of questions um, from your students in social media, which are being addressed sometimes individually. But how is Coleman College continuing your classes for your current students, knowing that a lot of those students may have uh, clinicals they need to take and really hands-on training? We've moved all online, and, and, and that's been where HCC has gone over the past few weeks. So we started classes on the 30th in an online mode. However, I, I really have to give the credit to the faculty who have really worked very, very hard over a two-week period of time to transition from face-to-face -face classes to online classes. And so they have been able, in a short period of time, to, to turn around and create hands-on exercises using online uh, modalities, using online software, so that they can continue some of those hands-on classes. Yes, we, over the, over the past several weeks, we have seen all of our clinical opportunities or spaces uh, diminished to where just about a week ago, our students are really unable to go to any clinical site because of the, the surge in COVID-19 cases. So for those students, we've made the commitment, they, if they would continue to do their classes online, when we can, um, begin to go back into the clinicals, we're going to do everything that we can do to help them complete their clinical. So, so that will happen. On, on the other hand, we, we are working with and contacting our accreditation to determine or, or what type of flexibility they may allow us to have with, with clinicals. That, that could be a range of things that can go from being able to go completely on uh, doing simulation. It could be doing simulation online for clinicals in, in lieu of doing, doing the actual clinicals. Or it can be reducing the number of hours that's re required for, for clinicals. So we, we continually monitor that. For example, in Texas, the, the, the uh, governor for the state of Texas came out and, is, and has allowing us to do simulation uh, for nursing so that we can get our graduates out into the workforce. So, so those are those are the things that we've been doing at Coleman and at HCC. It would seem to me with the shortage out there in healthcare workers, in healthcare workers being overworked right now, that in the industry may want your workers out there as soon as possible, even if they're working clinicals, and because a lot of them, from what I understand, already work in that field while they're attending. And it's a double-edged sword, Todd, because the, on, on one hand, there's that need. Um, you know, we can talk about at some point our healthcare workers are going to are going to be fatigued because they're asking them to work as much as they can more hours. Um, it's a it's a, it's a difficult situation. On the other hand, we have the safety of students, and and so where's where's the balance between you know helping the healthcare workforce versus the safety of students that are there? I think one of the best things we can do is really work out a plan where we can graduate them um, as quick as possible so they can get into the field. But there are some plans out there throughout the United States and some other hospital systems in other states are looking at ways in which they can bring students back into clinical sooner, but, but yet segregate them from, from COVID populations. So, so there's some plans out there um, we're, we're, I'll be participating in the meeting on Friday uh, at the Texas Medical Center. We're beginning to look at those types of plans. So 
So hopefully something will come out of that. What would be, uh, what about prospective students wanting to go into the health field? Do you see this uh, piquing one's interest to want to get into an essential field? Because we all need to be paying attention about what these essential jobs are right now in case a situation yeah. like this happens again. Yep, I, I, I think that's true. So a couple of points about that. Uh, number one, you know, our current application pool is as strong as ever. And so one would think that students might not want to come in, but we haven't seen that in the case. So our application pool has been, has been, been very strong right now. I do think that because of the, the workforce is going to change, uh, types of jobs are going to change. There, there have been individuals that we all know have either been fur furloughed or laid off. And so they'll be looking at professions that offer stability. And so one of the things that we've seen through this is that the healthcare profession offers that level of stability. And, and so I, you're right. I think we will see our, our number of applicants uh, actually increase, you know, over the next year. Dr. Nicotero, can you talk about some of your HCC grads and how they're currently working in our healthcare system? Where are they working? What type of venues? Are they in private offices, hospitals, working for public health systems? Where are they now? Yeah, um, we have a tremendous graduation rate. And generally, if a student comes to Coleman and, and, and they, they work hard at it, they're going to graduate. We have high pass rates on, on either licensing exam or, nat or national certification exam. So, so we, we're very, very good at doing that. So, so once our students get their license or their national certification, they are finding jobs either in the large healthcare systems uh, that, that, for example, Memorial Hermann, MD Anderson, uh, Methodist, our, student, our students are working in all those types of facilities, whether they're in the med center or outside, as we know, all of those large hospital systems, you know, have facilities outside. We have many students that also work in, in smaller private um, um, healthcare facilities. So, so we have students that are spread throughout the Houston healthcare uh, market. You know, looking wide, far term, um, beyond COVID, when we all start going back to work and society gets back functioning again, um, how do you think this is going to change the healthcare industry in delivering uh, care to patients? Yeah. yeah, I think one of the things that we have um, learned was we had to convert to telemedicine, just like we had to convert to online for, for teaching. So. Um, I think we're starting to, you know, telemedicine has been around a fairly long time, but it's never caught on um, as as as, it, as we had hoped it would. Uh, people still like that contact with face-to-face -face contact with the physician, but but I I do think we're starting to see the benefits of that. Um, I do think that that this people will get used to seeing their doctor in a telemedicine uh, uh, situation. So uh, I think that's going to be, I think we'll see more and more of, of the healthcare uh, system embracing telemedicine where we were perhaps reluctant in the beginning uh, to, to do that. So um, I think that's going to be a, a major change. I think, I think we might see a little bit more caution um, as we go forward over the next year in, in how we uh, approach our patients um, be, because of of the contact, uh, you know, we, we need to look at whether or not um, there'll be a second wave um, of, of COVID cases that come out after this subsides. So, so I think there'll be, there'll still be some apprehension or, or, or we'll still be very cautious on how we, how we uh, interface with our patients. So that's why I think the telemedicine route uh, will, will, will become more entrenched in, health, in, in our healthcare system. You know, you talked a few moments ago about your graduates now working out in the healthcare system uh, across Houston and really the country. What are you must be proud of that number one? Yeah. But what's the most thing that you're proud about right now during this crisis with uh, yeah. the folks at home? Well, I, I I have to say that you know when I'm very proud of what the faculty have done in the short period of time and and, and how they have really uh, rolled up their sleeves and said, okay, we're going we're to make this happen. And so we're, we're going to educate our students in an online format. And we're, we're going to, and I really 
just like using the term out of the box, but you really had to think out of the box. You had, you, you had to not go your normal route. And for healthcare, that's difficult because we're so used to that to that face to face. And so I'm very proud, you know, that the faculty embraced that we we, we need to look at a different way of educating students, and and that we're going to do it uh, as quick as we can. And then, secondly, I'm very proud that. All of the students came back. They didn't stop. They didn't say, you know what? I give up. I can't do this. They're invested in their education. I'm proud of those two things the most. Dr. Philip Nicotera, the president of Coleman College, thank you for being here on the show today. And uh, we appreciate the service you're doing out there and all of the staff. And, and uh, uh, you know, all of our faculty has done an incredible job getting online and ready right. to go to deliver our education to our students. Thank you for being here today. Yep, thank you, you're welcome. We're gonna take a short break. When we return, we're gonna talk about health information technology. Dr. Carla Tyson Howard from HCC Coleman College will be joining us next. Stay tuned to the top. Meet Lisa. When she's not moving to a Zydeco beat, she's making moves towards a better job with a nursing degree from Houston Community College. Ça c'est bon, Lisa. HCC for everyone, anytime. Why should young people care about the spread of coronavirus? Well, we know that people with underlying medical conditions over the age of 60 are at highest risk, but they've got to get it from somebody. So we're asking everyone to be selfless for others so that we can protect those who are most susceptible. Not going to bars, not going to restaurants. It all just means physical separation so that you have a space between you and others for more information on how you can social distance, please go to coronavirus.gov. This is Daniel. On his way to becoming a rock star, he got burned, literally. So he changed his tune and his career, and he's starting at Houston Community College. HCC, for everyone, anytime. Welcome back to The Topic, I'm Todd Duplantis. In dealing with a public health crisis like COVID-19, information is power. Being able to share that information among a team of professionals is absolutely vital, especially right now. Dr. Carla Tyson Howard is here to tell us about HCC's Health Information Technology Program. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Todd, I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. Now, health information technology, could you describe the program briefly for folks who may not be familiar with it? Sure. Health information, what we do is we manage the health care that health care providers generate. We make sure that that information is accurate, timely, and available for all authorized users. Now, your graduates will be working uh, in what type of environments? In uh, private offices, uh, doctor's offices? at hospitals, a mixture of both, where do you see them work? All of the above. In addition to the ones that you mentioned, we also work for insurance companies. We may work for um, a, a software company that, that uh, create electronic health records. Uh, we may work for an attorney who needs that information analyzed for their clients, their medical records to be analyzed, to determine if something of malpractice nature may have happened to the patient. During a crisis like this with COVID-19, how can your uh, students and graduates um, work in this crisis through health and information technology? I love that question, Todd. And the reason I love it is because health information people, they work in a remote environment. Uh, we have people who work in the revenue cycle, management, coding, data analytics. They work remotely, they don't necessarily work at the hospital or the healthcare environment. So what health information people do is we like data, we analyze data, we do research, we help epidemiologists do studies. And so for that, we're the perfect people in this situation, such as when you watch TV and you find out how many uh, cases have been diagnosed at this time. Well, the way they find out that information is that they have health information people who code diagnoses. And these codes are then generated into data, and they can tell us how many people have been diagnosed. It sounds like um, with the nature of the work that's being done, with everything being built online and having to deal with the coding itself as a whole different profession as well, um, there's a strong market for health IT workers. 
most definitely there's a strong uh, need for health IT workers. And the health information program at Houston Community College, it's a remote program. It's an online program. We've been online for approximately 10 years. And so people who want to go into a field where they do work remotely, we are currently training our students to be remote workers. So working in the health information field is a perfect opportunity for people right now because we are having to learn how to learn re uh, to work remote. And if you are the type of person who likes data, if you like technology, if you like working in a business environment, but yet you're still interested in healthcare and you want to be in that healthcare environment, health information may be what you're interested in. Does your program have certifications? Is it a two-year program? Can you transfer into a four-year program? Maybe you can break those down. Yes, most definitely. We have a two-year associate degree program. When students finish, they take a national certification exam to become a registered health information technician, RHIT for short. You can then progress to the baccalaureate level, get your baccalaureate degree in health information management. You can progress from there to the master's level or the doctorate level and get your degree in health informatics. You know, a lot of folks right now, the job market is very tough. I was talking to a gentleman this afternoon, and the prediction was that um, things may not get back to normal for at least a year, if not 18 months. Um, would you suggest this as a career for someone who may have been laid off, and they're looking for something more solid to be an essential worker in the future? Would this be a good career to take midlife, or would you want to transfer to a new uh, profession? Absolutely. This is a uh, perfect uh, second career choice for someone who may be more mature. In fact, most of our students are already working in the field, and our students have an average age of about 36 to 40 years of age anyway. So yes, I would invite them to come into this field. And I also want to add this. We are, again, Dr. Nicotera, our president, uh, as you were speaking to earlier, was talking about how our students are working remotely and we're having to learn how to do remote clinicals and things such as that. In our program, we are working this summer towards a new virtual clinical that will be intercollegiate. And we're gonna be working with other colleges and universities throughout the state of Texas in order to offer our students a virtual clinical so that they can continue to graduate this summer. So it sounds like what happened over the last couple of weeks where HCC had to uh, work in getting all their courses online, you guys were already there. Were you able to share any of your expertise in delivering this education with your colleagues? Oh yes, and they were, they call, of course, they call me and say, Carla, how do I do this? Or how do I do that? And, and we're a close knit family at Coleman College and we work very well together. And so most definitely we have shared uh, new ways of doing things using uh, WebEx, like we're on right now, right. using Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Google Docs, all of that. Do you see personally, I mean, the workers that you're training uh, could be working virtually online all the time. Do you see, um, you know, with the way we're doing things now, do you see the American public uh, there being a shift in the way we work right now where a lot of people are going to be opting because I imagine when we all when it's said and done and they say you can go back to work there's going to be a segment of this country that says you know what I don't feel stay safe I want to still work yeah. at home do you see us shifting as a society where that's going to be more acceptable than ever I definitely do I most definitely see us shifting in that direction I think we're seeing the advantages of remote work uh, I love working remotely. I get so much more work done. I'm a lot more productive. Sometimes I overwork because you're at home and you just keep working until it's time to go to bed, but you're able to get so much more done. And then on top of that, not only are you able to be more productive for your job, you can focus on what you need to do. And then it also helps you to get closer to your family. If you're already at home and with your family, you can, you can, you can take care of your family. So yes, I see uh, more fields becoming more remote because there are other fields that lend themselves to remote work. Dr. Carla Tyson Howard from the Health Information Technology Program, thanks for being here and, and enlightening us on this field that uh, I'm sure you guys will probably get a lot more interest as we move on now because uh, people are getting used to working at home and I'm sure a lot of folks out there will be looking for new career paths and this sound like, sounds like a solid one that uh, would work for a lot of folks. 
Thank you so much, Todd, for having me. I greatly appreciate it. Well, thank you for being here today on the topic. I'm Todd Duplantis. Thank you for joining us. Make sure you watch all of our webcasts and, and live shows on the internet. You can watch us in HCC social media and also on our YouTube channel. I'm Todd Duplantis. I'll see you next time on the topic.